welcome to our Sunday online experience today. We are super happy that you've been able to join us. Yeah, and a big shout out to everyone as well, because uh, this is one year now that we have been meeting in this format, online services, and it's something that none of us expected. But it's been one year and we're believing that we are gonna get through this season together. So it's important that we do carry this together. But a big thank you to everyone that has leaned in, that's reached out to friends, family, work colleagues. We've been hearing so many great reports from people who have literally joined our church, Hillsong Berlin, yeah. online. Uh, we've never met you, you've never met us, but we see each other. I guess each week. Or on Zoom Sundays. On Zoom Sundays as well, yeah, yeah. which has been a, a step in the right direction. And uh, I actually love seeing yeah, everyone smiling. I do. I love to scroll through. You know, Mark likes to just see the one page, but yeah. I confuse him because I scroll through all the pages just to see your beautiful faces. I, but love I must it. admit, I do love to see everyone's smiley face. Yeah. So today's service is special. We have got Pastor Brian who's bringing the word, and that's spoken a few weeks ago from Sydney, and I believe it just reflects who we are and where we're going as a church. I think it's gonna be a great word in season, yes. timely. So we're really excited to share that with you today. And our team have prepared beautiful songs of faith and hope. And I don't know about you in this season, what you've been doing and how you've been singing, but I know in our household, every Sunday, it's Joyce, it's me, it's Leela and our dogs. <laughs> and Joyce always sings the loudest. I so do. Uh, <laughs> anyway, wherever you are, why don't you lift your voice? Let's join the team. Let's sing these faith faith songs, songs of hope, songs of promise. Wonderful. And let's really believe today's service. We're going to share these moments together, God moments, amen. amen. And I really believe that we're going to go forward in strength. So why don't you lean in and let's lift our voices together. Fill this house with your spirit. Mark these walls with your peace. Singing, come, 
Reaching out 
know, these songs we've been singing today, you know, especially that last one where it talks about the mountains. There's no doubt that sometimes we can find ourselves facing huge mountains yeah. ahead of us. And I guess we still have in so many ways as a church, but maybe you've got mountains of some kind in your, you know, maybe it's a job that you had and now you don't have it. So we're gonna take a real moment right now just to believe and to stand with each and every one of you. We're gonna believe for the mountains to be removed. We're gonna believe for the obstacles to be overcome. And whatever it is that we need to pray, to believe God for right now, whether it's healing, whether it's finances, whether it's just breakthroughs in relationships, or whether it's literally the mountains look too high at the moment and we're believing that God's gonna give us the courage as a church collectively and as individuals that we're gonna really take this moment united in prayer, united in faith, and let's come take this moment to really believe God that we're gonna get through this in Jesus' name. So yes. come on, Joyce, why don't yeah. you share some of the things that we can pray for today? Yeah, so you know, I would love to share them, you know, and maybe you've put these prayer requests in or maybe even now you're thinking, well, there's something in my life I need prayer for. You can actually even now put in your prayer request and we will be praying for them during the weeks ahead. And you know, we've got people here and there's so many needs and sometimes it does seem like yeah. they're insurmountable, but I just wanna encourage you you to, yeah, today absolutely. that, you know, God is true and faithful. You can trust Him. You may not understand everything, but you can trust Him. So for those of you who've put in a prayer request concerning anxiety, especially in the workplace, I want to encourage you that God is your yeah. peace and that He will be there with you. And you can rely on Him to actually calm you down and actually give you the confidence to be at work and do what you need to do. We believe in God to comfort those who have lost loved ones. And you know, people have this last week lost loved ones unexpectedly, but also through miscarriage. And you know, God is the God of all comfort and He wants to comfort you yeah, and absolutely. those that you know who are also going through this. And many different situations, we're praying for, for good things as well. We're praying for a wedding to the preparation to be blessed. So many beautiful things that we are praying for, but also so many tragic things. And God is interested in it all, whether it's locally or globally with all the yeah, needs of the great. world. So let's just pray with that beautiful spirit of faith that we know we have in Christ. Christ. So Heavenly Father, yes. we thank You that yes, You Lord. are indeed a good and faithful God. Yes, and whilst Jesus. we may not understand everything, yes. we do know, God, that we are in the palm of Your hands. So I pray for every single need that is represented here yes. and every single need that is in the heart of the people behind this camera. Father, I ask that in the name of Jesus, You will meet all of the needs and that You will be everything that people need right now, yes. right this moment in all of the details. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I trust you're encouraged with that today. Thanks, yeah. Joyce. And, and for all the team as well that literally take these prayer requests and they just labor over them, they pray over them diligently, yeah. fervently, really believing God for breakthroughs. So, and can I ask everyone as well who's joining us today to really, we need to pray and believe God for things to open up for us as a church because Joyce and I, we are here with you today, but we are really believing on the other side of Easter, Easter's just a few weeks away, but we're really believing on the other side of Easter that we can have an opportunity to start doing some local gatherings or regional gatherings. Wouldn't that be amazing? Absolutely, it's so needed yeah. and we're all excited for it. Obviously, it's about staying 100% safe. Yeah. That's what we're really gonna believe God for, that we are always safe in this season that you're safe, but we need to believe God for doors to open for venues. We don't own a venue personally. We have a fantastic office, which is now a studio, but I really ask if you can all stand with us in prayer, united in prayer as a church, and really believe for doors to open up supernaturally, because we really do need to see miracles in this area. And, uh, you know, going into the summer, we don't know what it's gonna look like, but if there's an opening for us to get back together, we're gonna be taking it. But that means that we need to have venues open up for us as well. So really just asking everyone who's joining us today, just take it on your prayer list. If you, We're gonna pray with you, yep. but could you pray for us? Pray yes, for please. our church, pray for Hillsong <laughs> Berlin, all the, the people that are involved. And let's really believe that supernaturally, you know, we don't wanna be into this journey serving God, you know, after 10, 11 years, and we're right back at square one where we don't have a venue. Yes. It's always been our challenge, but it's never stopped the church momentum. It's never stopped the growth of the church, and it's never really stopped God bringing people to faith. It's never stopped God working in our hearts and lifting our spirits. So we have challenges, yes, but let's say like we did in the songs today, if you've done it before, you can do it again in okay. Jesus' name. So your prayers will be really grateful, and let's really believe that this year we're gonna see an opportunity to get back together and 
to continue to build the church in Jesus' name. Awesome. And we want to believe that also for Warsaw and for Prague because that's initiatives that have just started recently. And we're going to believe God that these doors open up so we can travel, we can be with the people there in these cities and we can see that go forward. So yeah, and a lot I love of things, it. I love it, things. Mark, because we've actually started those during a pandemic. Exactly. And you know, the mission that God has for us and for humanity, that has not changed. That is still yeah. the same and He still wants to reach people. So I'm especially, you know, grateful yeah. for the team that have actually pushed forward in actually making Prague and Warsaw a reality. So yeah. well done, and guys. And a big shout out to anyone that's joining us from them cities. Yay. We love you. And we're excited about all good what God wants to do in you and through all of us as we serve God together. Well, listen, great reports as well. There's yeah. always been great always. reports in this season, mm -hmm. which is so encouraging. People are celebrating their passing exams. Uh, people are seeing breakthroughs with family who were sick and they've recovered. People are seeing just, again, great things at work. Someone got a bonus, got pay rise and saw increase in that area. So let's believe for more of that. And lots of good feedback coming back from Color. So many people, yeah. really girls, uh, so many of the women, uh, the people that we love dearly were able to join in, family members, yeah, mothers, so grandmas. So that was fantastic. And you know what's fantastic as well is that we can actually, all that material that was put out, all of that exactly. resources available until the 31st of May. Yeah. So I know for me, I'm going to go back and actually do each and every session again and really take the time yep, to exactly. delve into those scriptures and delve into the truth that's been given to us. So yeah. it was, yeah, it was so really So make great. sure for everyone that has access to all the color material, it's still there available. Yeah. And don't forget as well, like there's so many good things that have been happening to people, but we need to share it with each other because it really does build a spirit of faith. And yeah. a big shout out to people got water baptized last week and awesome. we've been seeing salvations on Sundays. People just letting us know that they made a decision to follow Christ. Wonderful. So a lot of great things. And also I'm gonna take this moment right now to encourage us in our giving. And I'm really pleased that so many of you have been joining midweek with the enlarged learning and uh, looking at God, money and me because it's been such a great reason Resource, I believe it is a great resource that's going to enlarge all of us to really serve God. There's no doubt what how we view money and finances can really release us into all that God's got for us. So I'm going to take this moment to encourage today from uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Oh, we love it's a well-known we? verse in our <laughs> church. Uh, many of you have probably heard it before, but let me share it with you because I believe from this verse, there's three things that we can ask God and uh, three things that we say to God and from this verse, there's three things that God says to us. So let's have a read together. Malachi chapter three. Bring your tithe, a tenth of your income into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord. See if I don't open the windows of heaven for you and pour out blessings. So when we return the tithe, what we are basically saying is three things to God. Number one, we're saying, God, I choose to put you first. That's what we do when we tithe. We're basically letting God know, we're saying to God, I'm choosing to put you first. Number two, I believe you're acknowledging that, hey God, through tithing, returning the tithe to you, I'm saying to you, God, you can trust me. I'm gonna choose to put you first. And number two, I wanna say to you, God, you can trust me. And number three, I believe we're saying to God, God, you are my source. I think it's so important that we understand that when we return the tithe, we're saying, God, I put you first. We're saying, God, you can trust me. So and good. I believe we're saying also, hey God, you are my source. But let's also remind you, there's three things that God says to us when we return the tithe. He says like, if he's talking to me, Mark, you can test me at this. Mark, you can trust me with this. And Mark, I can provide for you. So it's not just what we are saying to God when we tithe, it's actually what God says to us when we honor Him and put Him first. He's saying, hey, you can trust me. God wants every one of us to know that we can trust Him and He's asking us to test Him and He's asking us to acknowledge that He can provide and He can actually sustain us, whatever the season is. So. This moment is a profound moment where we walk in understanding and revelation. So I really wanna encourage everyone today to honor the Word of God in your life, to put it to work and let God show His faithfulness. Maybe there is lack right now, but God wants to bring provision. Maybe there is an abundance right now, but God wants to bring increased release so that you can do more for His purposes. So whatever season you're in right now, why don't we take this moment and say, God, I wanna put you first. God, you can trust me. 
And I believe you are my source, not my job, not my family, not the economy of the world, but God, you are my source. So Father, I pray for everyone that's giving today, everyone that wants to honour God today. I pray that we can be trustworthy when it comes to the provision that's in our lives, that we, what we have, we're willing to honour you with today. In Jesus' Name. Amen. 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 So everyone wants to be a part of the giving today. You're more than welcome. Check out the details online. And don't forget the giving app is probably one of the best ways. If you haven't downloaded that, why don't you download that and have a look at the screen so you can see all the details about the giving app. That would be a huge blessing. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. You can go to hillsongberlin.de slash giving or download the giving app on your phone. Enter the amount you would like to give and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, you will receive a verification code. Type it in and you're good to go. To set up a recurring giving, click the box here. And of course, you can also give via PayPal and EC card simply by following the instructions on the website. Thank you for your generosity. Well, I hope you're ready for the Word today. Pastor Brian's bringing the message and yeah. Joyce, I honestly, I've seen the message already and it is a timely message. Yeah. It's important for all of us and we really, Joyce and I wanted to share this with you today with our church because, you know, it's not just us in Berlin, we're a part of something much, much bigger. So this Word, I believe it's on point, it's in season and it's talking about us as a church and obviously as we can all move forward. So it's time to rebuild yeah. in so many parts of the world and the church and so I really believe today's going to help us all. So enjoy. Get up and get going. It's building time. That's the name of my message. Get up and get going. It's building time. I'm speaking about your life. I'm speaking about what God is wanting to do this year. I got it in my spirit, New Year's Eve, that this year we're going to believe that God is going to rescue people restore people and rebuild people. Rescue people from the mouth of the lion, just like He did with Daniel. Restore people even when so much has been lost or when the locust or the canker worm, Bible terms, have devoured things in your life, He's gonna bring restoration. And God always restores, pressed down, shaken together and running out all over. And I'm excited about rebuilding. Whatever it is that's devastated, Whatever it is that's lost, whatever it is that's broken down, could be community, could be family, could be finances, could be literally a house. It could be so many different, different things. But this is a year of rebuilding. I wanna encourage you again around the idea of rebuilding. You see, Nehemiah in the Old Testament, he was the ultimate rebuilder. He saw a challenge, not yet in Jerusalem, one of those captives in Babylon, he sees a challenge and hears from the, from the God, from God about rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem had been broken down, the walls were in pieces, the gates were ruined and burned. And he got in his heart, he was gonna rebuild. And indeed God called him to rebuild those walls. I wonder what it is that God is gonna rebuild in your life. You see, the awesome news is Nehemiah, he got letter of authority from the king to be able to rebuild those walls. That is the Persian king, he got the letters of authority to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And you know what? We've also got our letter of authority. Here it is right here. We've got the letter of authority from the king to overcome whatever the devil has tried to destroy, whatever the devil has tried to break down and ruin. And we have the authority from the King to rebuild the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. I love the fact that Jesus has won that victory over the devil, that the serpent's head is crushed, just like God said it would be in Genesis chapter three. And the Jesus on that cross, He crushed the devil's head, the serpent's head. And the cross represents the bruised heel of Jesus. But the wonder is that that's where the authority was won. You see, in the Old Testament, humanity was created with dominion. Dominion is authority, dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and the cattle and over. <laughs> and so that's what's restored. 
What is restored is dominion, authority. If you can get it in your spirit, the greater is He that is in you than he that is coming against you, that the, you are on the winning side, that the devil's head has crashed. Devil, no, not today. Crush the devil's head. Yeah, that's the work that's already done in Jesus' Name. So Nehemiah, even before he got to Jerusalem, he began to plan. He began to plan the rebuild. You know how he started? And I spoke this a couple of weeks ago. He started by praying. He prayed and then he reminded himself of the purpose and promise of God. And then he repented and did the heart work. And you know what he did after that? He prayed and believed for success. Success in building that wall. He did. He didn't expect to fail. He prayed and believed for success. And ultimately, like I said, he got letters of authority from the King. So he had the authority to rebuild. The authority that I believe you have to rebuild through the power of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that's been robbed and ruined. For some people, it literally might be amongst your children. It's like something's been ruined, destroyed. God's gonna rebuild. Whatever it is, my friend, if you think about your life and what perhaps maybe you've been a dream, a vision, something that you've had in your spirit and it's in tatters, it's in ruin. It's rebuilding time. I hope you heard me. It's rebuilding time. <laughs> it is. If you're launching out to rebuild, whatever it is that the devil has plundered, I wonder if you've done your necessary pre-work like Nehemiah did. I mean, have you prayed and sought God? Let's do that if we're not already. Begin to pray, begin to seek God. And then remind yourself of God's purpose and God's promise in your life. And then do your heart work. Not just hard work, heart. Heart work. I was just checking I had the right side. Heart work. <laughs> and you know what you do after that? You pray and believe God for success. I don't believe God's ever answered someone's prayer to fail. And yet sometimes people say, oh, you shouldn't pray for success. Well, do you wanna pray to fail? Yes, of course. That's exactly what Nehemiah did. He went into that building, that wall with opposition and challenge, but he didn't go in there to fail. He went in there to succeed. God's wanting to succeed with the work He's going to do in your life. And you know, remind yourself, and stir up, stir up your spiritual authority. Amen, I believe it's time. It's time. The rebuild is happening. So let's turn to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. It says this, I said to them, you see the distress that we're in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the King's words that He had spoken unto me. And they said, this is the people, the people said, let us rise up and build. I love it, it wasn't just not Nehemiah who was committed to building. The people said, let us arise and build. And look at what they did next. They strengthened their hands for this good work. They strengthened their hands for this good work. Well, I need to strengthen my hands naturally and spiritually. Naturally, because sometimes in my office over here, I can open a bottle of water and I'm like this. And either Megan, my executive assistant, or one of the other females around the place, finally I just take the bottle off me and and give it back to me. I mean, it's humiliating. It's humiliating. It's just sweat. That's why I can't do it. It's just a sweat. It's humiliating. You'd think, you know, in the, in the spirit of honour, they'd at least turn around and go a couple of times, then give it to me. And then I'd feel like, hey, you've got to strengthen your hands. What does that mean? Whatever it takes, you've got to strengthen your hands. You've got to be prepared for the work because we want God to do it all. 
You know what? Jesus is the master builder. But God has always used people. And to rebuild, don't just wait for God. He wants you to be involved. He wants you to take up the challenge. He wants you to strengthen your hands and be ready for the rebuild. Ah, It says in the old King James, so they strengthened their hands for the good work. Our church is, well, it's almost four decades old. We were young once. Yeah, almost four decades old. You know, there are certain fundamentals that have always been important to who we are. One of those things is we've always been about building. Not building buildings, that's become a big part of it to house the people of God. But help people build their lives. See people build their lives. Watch the testimonies, listen to the stories as people build their lives. And believe along with Jesus Christ, the Master Builder, to build the church. He said, I'll build my church. The Old Testament, unless the Lord builds the house, they labour in vain that build it. He's the master builder, but God always uses people. They say, oh, you know, we don't have to do it. Jesus builds His church. Well, He does, but He's not gonna play the keyboard this morning. He needs someone to help Him. (laughs) So, so, He's a master builder. I read a tweet once and I said, Jesus is the master builder. And with the moments I got a tweet back, a reply from the New South Wales Master Builders Association. <laughs> True story. And it said, is he licensed? <laughs> yes. Yes. So I've always been about building, helping people build their lives about building the church. And over these decades, over the years, we've seen the fruit of constant focus with generations getting stronger. See, that's building. As we build, the generations get stronger in Jesus' Name. And our church reaching more and more people, growing, expanding, getting stronger. It's in our DNA. Yeah, it is, it's in our DNA. And so I love watching how the Master Builder rebuilds lives. And that's what He does. He used Nehemiah in the Old Testament to rebuild. And of course, this season, 2020, last year now, it's just so disorientating. Some people are questioning things they never questioned, thinking thoughts that maybe they'd never normally think like. People are disorientated. Uh, sometimes much more so than they should be. But what I do know is in the middle of it, uh, you can lose your building edge. You really can. Uh, You start focusing on survival and just getting through. And that's why I'm trying to stir your faith and inspire you that it's building time. Yes, it's building time. Amen, God is strengthening hands. And over and above that, I believe He's putting steel in your bones and fire in your belly. So you're ready for the rebuild. Don't just settle with what the devil has devastated. Don't just accept it and settle. Don't don't just, no, no, no. Get your hands ready. Get your heart ready. Do those things, pray, remind yourself of God's goodness. Do the heart work, believe God for success. Remind yourself of the authority you have through Jesus Christ. Get get your sleeves up. Roll up your sleeves. Ah, With muscles this size, it's hard to get it up. Uh, And get ready for building. That's a look for you. How's that? Yeah. I reckon this will make it in Milan. On the catwalks. So there's so much to learn from Nehemiah. Let's have a look at what Nehemiah did. You know the first thing he did when it came to rebuilding that wall? First thing he did is he inspected the ruins. Sometimes we don't, we don't even wanna look at what we've lost. It's just too heartbreaking. 
But look at Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 13. It says, I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuge gate. The refuse gate. It's called the refuge gate, refuse gate for a reason. I think it's also called the dung gate. Now, whether, whether you've ever heard on the walls of Jerusalem of the refuse gate or the dung gate, but the reason they call it that is because that's where the dung was. They piled it up just not too far from that gate. And when the Jerusalem winds blew, of course, the smell or the odour went right across that gate. And so never wonder again why it's called the dung gate. It's because it stunk like dung. Yeah. And so I went out by night through the valley gate, the serpent wall and the refuse gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which are broken down and its gates, which were burned with fire. He checked it all out. Why? Because he needed a clear picture of where things were at. Have you got a clear picture of where things are at right now? Because it all brings confusion in. We need to get that clear picture. See what we're dealing with. Not be afraid of it. Why is that? It's because then you can start to believe God for the resource you need. You can see the, t- the job that it's at hand. You can begin to plan and uh, you can be intentional about the rebuilding. Planning's a good thing. I guess you could call it taking goals or, or, or rather setting goals or you can call it other things, but do you have a plan? When it comes to your family, there's someone whose son is, well, the relationship is in ruins, it's broken down. Have you got a plan? Pray, believe God, love Him like maybe expressing that more than he's ever seen before, my help. But at least have a plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so a plan in life is always a good thing. And and counting the cost, which is why he was looking at the ruins, is always a good thing. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. So I hope there's not just a sermon for you. I hope you're taking it on board. I hope you are prepared and planned and ready for what's ahead of you. I pray that you truly count the cost. Whoever builds a tower, the Bible says, I think Jesus says, and doesn't first look at the cost before building it. And so, yeah, that's why first thing he did when he got to Jerusalem, he looked at the ruins. He knew what he would need. He knew the resources. He made a plan. He could see the job that was at hand. No doubt he was believing as God every step of the way because it's God who had called him to do it. So he's holding on to God, which is a great thing. And if you have to rebuild, the sheer magnitude of what's ahead of you can sometimes rattle you. (laughs) Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Someone tell someone next to you, stay in faith. In your lounge room, tell the person next to you, stay in faith. Stay in faith. Yeah. So Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 20. Listen to what happens now. After looking at the ruins, Nehemiah says this, So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven Himself will prosper us. Bible word. Therefore, we His servants will arise and build. Remember the people said, let's rise and build. And now Nehemiah, their leader was saying, let us arise and build. Thank God for the people who stood with Him. I thank God for the people of our church, Hillsong Church, who over decades have been up for the building. I talked about the Kingdom Builders. I talked about just the spirit of the body of our church. And they've always been up for the building. They've always been up for the forward progress. And I thank God for people whose heart and spirit is, let us rise up and build. And then the leader, of course, says, arise and build. One thing about leadership, you can't do it alone. 
And I'll always be grateful, Bobby and I both will always be grateful for those of you who have been with us for decades and even if you've only been here a few months, you know what? Let's all together be committed to the building. You see, the Word of the Lord was, the God of heaven Himself will prosper us. Therefore, we will arise and build. Take that into your spirit. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Let us arise and build. So second, He gathered other builders around Him. He wasn't going solo on this wall building. He needed other people. We all need other people. If you are online and you haven't yet made it back into one of our physical services, can I just say to you, when you stand shoulder to shoulder with people, when you're actually experiencing community, that's when together we get so much more done. And Nehemiah had the wisdom to gather other people around him. That's what's so wonderful about Connects groups. Because you pray together, you believe together, you stand with each other. And if someone is building, you build together. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. It says this, Then Eliashim, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. Next to Eliashib, the man of Jericho built. And next to them, Zakur, the son of Imri built. Also the sons of Hanasseh built. It goes on and talks about others. And it just keeps talking about those who built. It says, Hanasseh built the fish gate. It says next to them, Merimoth, the son of. Then it goes on, next to them, Zadok, the son of. Next to them, the Techoids. We need each other. I want you to hear that. We need each other. I need you. <laughs> you need me. <laughs> we need each other. We're not called to do this alone. And to surround yourself with other builders, wow, that is such a powerful thing to do. People who inspire you. People who can give you wisdom and godly counsel. People who are there to cheer you on. Or maybe to weep with you when times are tough and celebrate. I'm so joy, I'm so pleased that over all the years, both within our church and pastors around the world and so on, that to have those kind of people who are also people who are building something. And you know what? They know how to weep when you're weeping and joyful and celebrate with you when you're celebrating. You need those people. And I mentioned connect groups, honestly. I'm not just promoting connect groups here. I want to challenge everybody to be in a small group where you pray together. You pray together, you, you, not literally, but you pray together and you play together. In other words, you have fun and community, but you also know how to get before God and pray for each other. And stand. Everybody needs people with them. And in the Bible, in Nehemiah was building that wall, all these different people had their part of the wall to build. And so there's this, next to him, next to him. Look both sides, who's next to you in life? Who's next to you? If you don't have those people, pray to God and believe He'll put those people in your life. Listen to it. What God wants to do in, through you is too great and takes too long for you to do it alone. Who have you actually got around you? It's a, it's a question. Who do you have around you? It's great to identify those people. See, not everybody's up for the building. In Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 5 here, it talks about the Tekoites, which uh, we heard in Hebrew before. And it says, The Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. In other words, not everyone's up for the building. These people would not put their shoulders. They wouldn't lean in to the work of the Lord. I don't say cut anyone off, but I am saying make sure if you're committed to rebuilding the things that are devastated, that you've got builders in and around you and not people who aren't even prepared to lean in, put their shoulder in to the work of the Lord. Proverbs, I've got a feeling it's four, but Proverbs four, but I might be totally wrong. But I know what it says, he who deals with a slack hand is poor. We're created for work. We really are. 
That's why, yes, God wants to rebuild, but He wants you to be involved. Strengthen your hands, prepare, stand with people who are prepared to put their shoulder into the work, who are committed to rebuilding. And whatever they're building will inspire you. And whatever you're building or seeing rebuilt can inspire the people around you, even your own family, those you love, people all around you. Because builders understand each other. They do. They understand what it's like to be captured by a dream or a vision or a God-given goal. Um, they, 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 they got the will to build, which is important. And we need those people. Like I said, they cheer you on. They provide wisdom. They stand with you in the gap. They pray with you and it's powerful. So don't underestimate the importance of rubbing shoulders with other builders. Number three, he was gutsy. We're talking about Nehemiah in the building of the wall. Number three, see it written up there? He was gutsy. He was courageous, determined and immovable. Amen, no room for cowardice here. He was courageous, determined and immovable. I call it Holy Ghost stubbornness. No matter how many times they knock you down, you're getting up again. <laughs> Holy Ghost stubbornness. How much of that have you got in you? That's why God, I think He genuinely does strengthen our hands. I think He does <laughs> put fire in your belly, steel in your soul. Yeah so that we can stand even in the opposition. Because the opposition that faced Nehemiah and his co-builders was massive. There was Sambalat and Tobiah and others. And I mean, they were merciless in coming against the work of the Lord. They were merciless in it. In fact, if you read, and it'd be great if you read the book of Nehemiah. If you just read between Nehemiah chapter four and Nehemiah chapter six, you'll find specific examples of these things right here. This is what the, uh, these people, Nehemiah and that, they start to build the wall and this is what we people were doing to come against them. First, they spread bad reports, overblowing reports of their power and their intentions of the opposition's power and intentions. So in other words, they spoke themselves up to undermine Nehemiah's confidence. Ridicule and insults. That's what was coming their way. They tried to make fun of Nehemiah and his little strength and the stupidity of what he was trying to do and the inevitability that he would fail in building this wall. That's what they were trying to come against them with. Intimidation and threats, tried to sow fear and dread so they were down their tools in fear of being attacked. I mean, these are the actual things you'll see in the Scripture. Slander and accusations. They accused Nehemiah of wrongdoing and having secret plans to rise up against the king. You know what? If the devil can't get you to back down, he'll try and tarnish you. Or maybe attack your reputation. I know. I've been there. <laughs> try to turn people against you. They sowed dissent. Nehemiah chapter four to chapter six, trying to get around Nehemiah or those people who were around Nehemiah to abandon him and leaving him weak and try and talk him down from their settled purpose. They tried to get him to compromise. They enticed him to compromise. Tried to get him to compromise on his convictions and behave in a cowardly, self-serving way. And they literally made plots against him. I'll be honest with you, in this season right now, we've been going through a time like that. Where I could name every single one of those things I just mentioned, if you wrote them down, and, I, and we've been experiencing it. Sensationalised media, half true, untrue, and everything in between. And it's, it's challenging. But look who I've got with me. <laughs> look at you, look at you. Look at you. Builders. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. But you know, the silent majority, I went for a walk yesterday with my dog. And uh, we walked five Ks actually. I'm just doing, you know. But uh, I even slow jogged 
a few of the little uphills. Just so you know, still a bit of life in the old boy yet. Uh, but you know, as I, while I was walking and contemplating, I started to think of our church. Do you know in our church across the world, there's hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, we were getting before COVID 150,000 people in services all around the world. And on our database, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. And I started to think about the silent majority. You know, you get all these loud voices. And I don't discount anybody's voice, but I started to think about the silent majority. The people who have incredible stories to tell about Jesus and what He's done and their experience at Hillsong Church and the way the pastors reached out to them when someone was dying or the way the sermons and the preaching and teaching has changed their lives or the people they met at Hillsong that have helped frame their future or, or you know, it's just so many. We get them into the church, those stories, every day, every day. We get these amazing stories. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the silent majority. And I thought it's about time the silent majority stood up. And I started thinking, imagine if we had a hashtag, I love my Hillsong Church. And then what you do is you post your best selfie and then in the caption, just talk about your experience at Hillsong Church. Obviously it's all about Jesus, but your story at Hillsong Church. Big, nice photo, find your best selfie. If you don't like yourself, just put someone else's photo in there. <laughs> put Robert Ferguson's photo in there and just do the caption. With the hashtag's the important part. I love my Hillsong Church. I said it in the last service and I looked at it. Don't do it now. I hashtag, I, look, I love my Hillsong Church. There was already a few of them in there before the service even finished. Wow. How did that happen when people were listening to every word I said? <laughs> and so put it in there. And uh, I'll tell you this, yesterday at Kingdom Builders, I got talking to a couple of people. They are actually in this service. And this is what happened. They happened to be going by and smiled, they smiled. We got talking. And they began to tell me their story. I've seen them in church many, many times. And their story was this. They said, we came to Hillsong 2006. They said, when we came, our lives were broken. They'd come from another country. They said their lives were broken. They began to talk about the teaching and how it's transformed them and changed them. And as they go on, they start to tell me about their broken past. How in another country that the husband had been in jail for two years. And uh, I mean, oh wow. And then, because I've seen these people so many times in church, but then the wife, the woman says, I was in jail for, I think four and a half years. I think it was. And my daughter was born in jail. And I look at these people. They're a part of our community, have been for years. They're kingdom builders. God has restored their lives. There's so many stories for the silent majority. So I think it's time we waged a campaign and mobilise the silent majority to tell your story because the stories are amazing. They're amazing. You know, and so Nehemiah, he had all this opposition. In Nehemiah chapter four, verse 10, Judas said, the strength of the labourers, Nehemiah's labourers is failing. And there's so much rubbish that we're not able to build the wall. But then the adversaries, the opposition said, they will neither know nor see anything. We came into their midst and will kill them and cause the work to cease. They were talking about infiltrating them. They were speaking themselves up. And so it was when the Jews who dwell near this, them came that they told us 10 times from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. But you know what? The Bible, the Bible makes it very clear that Nehemiah stood strong. He stood strong. He kept moving forward, inspired those around him to stand with him. Thank God for good people. I've only got through half of this message. I even tried to go faster in this service to get through more of it, but failed. And I'm gonna keep going though, because I've got this rebuilding thing in my spirit. I wonder what it is that God is wanting to rebuild in your life. 2021, the rebuild is on. 
the rebuild is on. Trust the Holy Spirit, believe God. Strengthen your hands, get ready for what's ahead. Don't settle, don't be overwhelmed and get yourself into survival mode in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the torrent. Hey, maybe you're feeling the cyclone and you're seeing metaphorically the house blowing apart. But can I tell you this? It's rebuilding time. It is rebuilding time. The people said, let us rise and build. And what did Nehemiah said? Arise and build. And that's exactly what they did. They set their heart on seeing the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt, bringing strength to the city of God. Amen. 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 Lord, your love has made a way, and every day I see a blessing, and every day I sing your praise. Let your healing be my portion, let your mercy be my strength, be my refuge and my fortress, be my rest, my hiding place. God, my rock and my salvation, my redemption and my grace. Let your presence go before me, let your spirit. I trust you're encouraged today with the message from Pastor Brian. I think it was timely, like I said, and significant for all of us. And uh, I actually love what he mentioned about the hashtag and telling your story. And I think if you didn't get to see that, I just want to let everyone know that I think it's important that we actually, you know, as a as so many of us have had our lives personally impacted by what God has done in us and yeah, through us. Yeah, gosh, we certainly so, have, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, wow. through the lives of Pastor Brian and Bobby stepping out many years ago, yeah. to all of us that have been you know, impacted by the local church that we're building here. But there's no doubt we are, uh, I've got to be up for rebuilding. Yeah. And so for everyone that's joining us today, just why don't you take that moment to say, hey, hashtag, I love my Hillsong Church. If you're able to do that, you're invited to do that. Uh, put a photo, a great photo of you up there with your family, with you yourself, and just tell this story, what God has done. You know, there's no doubt, I think there's so many stories that we don't get to hear from people that maybe have had their lives literally transformed. The whole direction of their life has been completely changed. And so I guess there's so many incredible God stories out there. So if you wanna be a part of that, if you wanna uh, join that hashtag, uh, I love my Hillsong Church, feel free to do that. That will be a great blessing. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think this would be a great moment actually to pray because this is the moment that we all believe God for and that is salvation. Mm. So for anyone that's joining us, Joyce, one yeah. of your leaders in prayer, uh, let's pray for you, pray for whoever's joining us today to believe that you're gonna encounter Jesus. Yes, you know, cause I, I've been thinking regarding this whole topic of rescue, restore, rebuild. And you know, the most profound defining way that we can actually start to rebuild our lives is by accepting the wonderful love that God has for us. That beautiful, incredible love that Jesus had that He actually gave His life yeah. so that you and I can come so into relationship with our Heavenly Father and actually start to rebuild. And I'm just so grateful to God for what He's done in our lives, how He's transformed our lives. And I know that He can do the same for you. So if that's you today and you would like to pray a prayer of salvation with us, whether it's for the first time or whether it's recommitting to this journey of having your life rebuilt with the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, on your side, with Jesus as your Lord and Saviour and God as your Heavenly Father, then we'd be honoured if you would pray this prayer with us right now. Jesus, thank you for accepting and loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and thank you that you rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and accept you as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present and future. From now on, I declare I am loved by God, I am forgiven, and I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. So beautiful when you pray that prayer. Such a defining moment. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone who's prayed that prayer, anyone that's made that decision to really put Christ at the center, we're cheering you on. We celebrate you today. And uh, let us know because obviously moving forward is so important and joining a community of faith people, people that are going to believe in you, believe in what God has for you is going to be crucial. So let us know. And you know, this coming week, we've got Discovery Online, which is about people who are new to faith or discovering their faith in Christ. Uh, Why don't you check out the details, DM us or have a little chat in the chat there. And uh, we'll be glad to help you. And lots of things coming up. We've got God, Money and Me as well continuing. Uh, So if you want to be a part of that, feel free. It's not too late to join. And Easter's just around the corner. Seriously, the chocolates are coming. And we've got uh, through the Kindness Project, just quickly let everyone know, check out the Kindness Project because this Easter through the Kindness Project, what we're doing is we're inviting our church to buy an Easter bunny or a chocolate egg or whatever you'd probably buy yourself. And if you don't, still do it for someone else anyway. And we've basically found that there's an opportunity to be a blessing to families in need, young children that maybe normally through companies like chocolate companies that would send things, uh, they've all stopped this year. And so there's a great opportunity for our church this, this I nearly say Christmas, uh, Easter. this Easter, uh, we've got an opportunity to be a great, great blessing to families in need, families yeah, who are seeking, seeking refuge. refuge. And it'd be a great chance. So it's an invitation for our church to buy a chocolate bunny, to buy an Easter egg, and we're gonna be a blessing to these families. And also we can write a card to the elderly just to say they're not forgotten, they're loved and we're thinking of them. There's an opportunity to fill in a card and just write a message to the elderly. And we've also got um, other things that we can be a part of when it comes to our environment. Can you believe it? There's something for all of us to be a part of. So why don't you check out the environment and why don't we carry this season together and let's believe God that we're gonna see the best days ahead in Jesus' name. So Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the message from Pastor Brian. Thank you, Father, for people making decisions for Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for a faithful, incredible group of believers Mm. that are not scared uh, to move forward, that we're willing to stay in this together. And Father, I ask that you'll keep all of us absolutely protected and covered in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for a new venue to open up for us so that we can see progress and we can see more people come to know Jesus. We love you guys. Thank you for joining us today. Stay safe, stay connected, and we'll see you next weekend also for Zoom Sunday. my place.